Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Jason Marino. And if you've joined us before around Teams platform and application in this video series we've done, um, we've covered what Teams applications are, where to find them, how you can leverage them and get the most value out of them, and what it takes to get published. And so today I'm really stoked. We have Trent Hazy back uh, from Teams Engineering. I'll let him introduce himself in a sec here. But we're going to talk about what information your applications can access in, inside of Teams and whether or not you should allow or block those applications from your Microsoft Teams tenant. So Trent, stoked to have you, dude. Would you mind maybe letting everybody know uh, your role in Teams Engineering and what you've been working on for the past year and a half? Yeah, for sure. So I lead the uh, growth specifically on third-party applications within Teams. And uh, Jace, you hit the nail on the head. Like when, when I'm talking to people about third-party apps in Teams, the first thing their mind goes to is what should I allow? What should I block? And so I'm glad we're covering this topic today. Um, I actually made a little diagram. Let me show it to you. And uh, this diagram, I think, has helped a bunch of our customers, dozens of our customers figure out, like, what is my answer to that question? So check this out. Here's my little diagram, uh, and we'll go deeper into this. But it starts off with asking the question, what apps do my users actually rely on? Right? So those are the apps that everyone in the, in the company or organization is, is using every day to get their work done. Um, that's can a good I, can start. I pause you on that real quick? Because yeah. you're right. I think that's the best starting point. We get asked this question a lot. And I think, I'm not saying don't go for the new applications, but it's so much easier to get people to use what they're familiar with first, right? Because Teams is a big move for cultural and technology standpoint when it comes to a lot of organizations, right? I mean, we saw this internally. 100%. And using something you're familiar with, it's going to have the same security stance and privacy considerations. And so, um, it, the, the risk there is really low. If, if awesome. you're using it already, the users are going to be familiar with it. The security concerns are, are probably already addressed. So it's a really good point. Um, the second layer, we, we'll talk about this in greater depth, but like, what do I actually know about this app and the developer behind it? Like, that's a big question to answer. Uh, the more you know, the more comfortable you'll be enabling it. Um, what can this app actually do in Teams? That's a big question because it has implications about what data leaves the corporate network. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that. That's like the biggest question is, hey, um, when I'm using this app, what does the developer see? For sure. And then the last thing that I, I talk to a lot of our customers about is, um, what is Teams doing fundamentally as a, an entire product that's going to protect me when I'm using apps? Mm -hmm. And so a couple of things we can highlight there. Um, so we we actually worked together on this document uh, called the the governance guide. Um, I'm excited to share this with everyone because it's it's all about controlling the apps that uh, are available. And so, so that framework. Real quick thing to point out here is after the last year and a half of you focusing on this business, it's culminated in this document, which is a live document, we'll keep updated, but it, it's incredibly valuable and it's posted for anyone watching this video, we'll have it in the description of the video so you can you can grab this and follow along as well. But just I appreciate your work, dude. This thing is so awesome. Yeah, good call out that uh, this is a lot of lessons learned in like a five page document, like literally years of learning. So. Um, I am pointing to a bunch of resources. And so if I were an IT admin trying to assess the risk of as, as specific apps in Teams, this is what I would do based on my, my work with a bunch of customers. So uh, I'll actually start from the bottom. I mentioned the concept of, of Teams actually providing some protection. So when I look at the privacy, security, and compliance features within Teams, it includes things like information barriers, retention policies, conditional access, encryption, and app policies. And so when I look at any one of those features, um, I can get a better idea of what does Teams or Microsoft 365 generally have in place that protects me and my users when, when we're using apps in Teams. And a lot of those have implications um, in terms of keeping me and my information safe. So that I think I'd is, imagine it, that covers a great deal of the concern that when you're talking to customers, yeah. Yes, yes, this is a big one. I think um, when Teams was architected from the beginning as part of M365, 
uh, we had to meet certain pretty high hurdles from a, a privacy, security, and compliance standpoint. Sure. So this next one is really interesting. That it's answering the question, what can this app do and access? So when I, I analyze the app in question, um, let's say, for example, I'm looking at Asana. It's a, a popular task management tool. Um, I need to know what capabilities it has. Um, is it a bot? Is it a tab? Is it a message extension? That actually has implications on what data leaves the corporate network because certain information can be exposed based on the capability of that app. Mm -hmm. uh, what's awesome is that the pop-up uh, in the App Store actually shows you those things. And so that's why I have a little screenshot of the pop-up here, because if you look there, you're gonna find what the capabilities are um, and what the permissions are. So let me show you an example real fast. Here's Asana. So there's a descri description about the app, obviously. And then it tells me where it can work. Uh, here it's a tab, a bot, and messaging and meeting. So this actually is exposed in a lot of different surface areas. Um, once you know that, you can actually go to this link right here, aka.ms slash Teams app permissions, and find out based on those endpoints, those capabilities, what data might leave my network. Um, because those, those capabilities act very differently. So that's that's my like one of my favorite hints in in this document. Um, and then you can see I also call it permissions. And if you keep scrolling down in this pop up, you'll see, you know, it's going to receive messages that I provide to it. It's going to send me messages. It can see some basic profile information and so on. So when I combine these capabilities, these permissions, and then where I'm using this app, whether in a team or channel, a chat or the personal scope, um, that gives me the full picture of what data is exposed to this developer um, and how it might be exposed to them. All right, so uh, let's talk quickly about this next layer, which is answering the question of what do I know about this app, uh, specifically the security of that app and the developer. So two tips here, and you can see these links um, We'll, we'll make sure you can you can access access these. But the uh, the first one is go look at what apps are enabled in the Azure Active Directory. If your organization's using it for uh, your identity, um, this is a perfect place to start because chances are uh, your fellow admin on the AAD side has enabled certain third party apps, uh, which means they've been through a review already. And so if they're uh, third-party apps uh, listed over here in AAD, it probably makes sense to enable those same ones in Teams um, because it's the same product. Um, I've seen a lot of this recently, right? I mean, I, I, over the last year, it's amazing watching the momentum around customers starting here, especially off the back of your work, um, where they're enabling tens of thousands of users. But to your point, these apps that are already approved. They're already approved. That's, I think, the main takeaway. So that's a good call out. Um, Okay, this last one here under this question is about security and compliance. And um, we're, we're going to talk about this in a different episode, but I think the, the main takeaway here is that the app developer can actually go out of their way to list their security and compliance um, stance. And you can actually see bullet by bullet, ah, they're FINRA compliant, they're SOC 2 compliant. And that criteria might help you um, kind of meet your own expectations internally of what is safe to enable and what uh, is not. So check out uh, the security and compliance catalog that actually exposes, ex, uh, exposes that on the app uh, level. That's awesome, dude. So uh, yeah, when you bring all this together, I know what my users are working on uh, every day. I know what's enabled or approved already. Um, I know what data might leave my network and how, um, and then I know how Teams is safeguarding me uh, holistically. That's usually my my full kind of list that makes me comfortable as an admin enabling an app in Teams. Beautiful. Again, just a reminder: we've got this posted down in the um, in the video description, so feel free to leverage this. It's a publicly available document, Trent. 
love your guys' work, man. You've had such an impact on so many of our customers. We have so many out there that are using these applications every day, thanks to you guys and your work, and appreciate the partnership and you sharing this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.